Oh, we would never do such a thing. And, uh, as you say, Charlie, 30 left. I think now we're looking at eight left. Not even that. Four left now. Just two bouts to go in ring A. And looking behind me, I don't think any of the other rings have got any activity going on. So we really are at the business end of proceedings here at the Harringay Box Cup. 390-odd down to four. And in front of us, senior A, 56 kilo bantamweight between Nathan Gray from Woking in the red corner. Jack Brooker from North Alt in the blue. Can't believe there are only two bouts left. I know. We've only been here three days. <laughs> as tired as the boxes. <laughs> Brooker, tall, rangy Southport, holding the centre of the ring in the blue. Nathan Gray, Great Britain flag on his, uh, his short. These are Class A 56, 56 kilo boxes, bantamweight. A very strong division in this country. Current England boxing elite champion is Callum French from Burtley. We've got decision over Liverpool's Peter McGrail in this year's final. And Peter McGrail is very much one to one, for, one to watch for the future as well. Done well in international tournaments. He's already been touted as a Tokyo 2020 candidate. seems a, a long way away now but two or three years ago Rio seemed a long way away and all of a sudden it's on everybody's lips once again and it just showed you how quickly those cycles do progress and these young men will certainly have their eye on the latter of Tokyo and even beyond so far let's start from Brooker working behind that long southpaw jab. Nathan Gray trying to work himself inside the pocket. Well, I say there's been a lot of uh, boxers patiently waiting and eager to get in the ring and then you find out you're going to be the penultimate bout of the afternoon of a number of contestants that we have had you must think you've drawn the short straw a real testament to these young men John that kind of waiting and weighing in late nights and early mornings that they've had over the last three days as well as competing that the standard has been as high as it has and we said it's good preparation for those international competitions in the future and uh, testament to the quality that we have seen this weekend yeah it is very tough very draining boxing day after day but we've seen plenty of energy here which is a good sign Obviously, you tend to think professional boxing is the tougher. It's boxed over a longer distance. But a tournament, you know, like the World Championships, like the Olympics, you know, you can have, you know, in the world, you can have five five bouts, maybe possibly more, depending on the draw, depending on the number of entries. You know, that's a lot of rounds. Each, you know, on a different day, not that long to recover. And that, you're fighting the best, you're boxing the best in the world in those major competitions. Different, and then you have to deal with different styles changing. So tournament boxing, you know, it's known as am the amateur game, but it's a serious business. And one only for the most professional, I suppose, in that sense of the word. And uh, round two sounds, and both men rushing the centre of the ring. Nice double jab from Brooker. Landed the second. Nathan Gray a little bit short with that jab. 
He's just trying to reach to get him, isn't he? And not quite being able to catch up with him. That's the value of having good judgment of distance. And Jack Brooker just controlling the early stages of this second round. He's able to land a hook there whilst moving back at the same time. It's not an easy skill. He's done it there, but the success for Nathan Gray with that lead left hook. Every now and again, Gray cracks him. A hard shot. His hands of Jack Brooker very low indeed as well. So using those reflexes, timing those counts as well, to bring that head out of range. Not much else to protect the uh, the head apart from his reflexes. Well, maybe Brooker's been watching Ali Straw too much. Maybe he has. Oh, that's terrific. A little one-two uppercut combination to the body and then a short, sharp shot to the head from uh, Jack Brooker. That's eye-catching stuff for the, the judges were inside. Brooker's corner urging him forwards, urging to use that size and that strength advantage to try and bully his man backwards. Nathan Gray has just turned the second half of this round. Just muddied the waters a little bit for the judges and uh, a difficult one to score. That was a nice jab from Brooker. The more he can land those long range shots, the easier it will be for him to convince the judges that he's the one in control. But all the while it Goes from mid-range to short, and then on the inside. Just uh, of anyone's uh, contest when it's boxed at that distance. So, prerogative really on Brooker to keep this long, keep the jab pumping out. So you can't always get away with having your hands loose and low. And just started to see Brooker letting, leaking some shots through. Competitive as always. He's reached this uh, bantamweight final round approaches. And John, big final contest to look forward to. Jordan Thompson and Jordan Reynolds, both men impressed in the semi finals. They did. Jordan Thompson from Jewelry Quarter. Looks a skillful boxer. Reynolds, but Reynolds is too, and Reynolds had a really high, sort of high work rate and exciting style. So it could be an, an interesting clash of styles in the end. But before we get back down to business there, we've got uh, a little bit more work to be settled between these two men and you just feel the tempo is going to go up a notch. Nathan Gray perhaps knows he's got to press the fight in the red vest and he's come out strong. Jack Brooker probably marginally in front in this one. It does seem like when Gray sort of rushes forward to attack, he's rushing forward with both hands lower. I guess he's wanting to you know, throw as many punches as he can. Those mistakes, I think Brooker needs to just lead off first and take advantage of them and again Brooker's corner urging him to stay busy oh, it's a nice combination right hand lead then a left hook off the back of it Nathan Gray momentarily backed up and a bit more success for Brooker and Gray just willing himself forwards almost against his instinct now he's looking a little bit more tired as we head to the midpoint of this third and final round Brooker starts to unload to the body and perhaps the corner sense that Gray is getting tired. The energy sapping from the legs of the man in the red corner. Just locks up, try and give himself 10 or 15 seconds. 
of a breather. Oh, better from Brooker, those combinations starting to come together very nicely and the power beginning to drain away from the shots of Nathan Gray. Oh, terrific. One, two, sharp combination straight through the chin of Gray. Took them well, but he's looking more and more weary as this bout progresses. And Brooker still looking sharp, picking his shots. Is the tie turning, do you think, John? Certainly tearing into one another. Hard to say if Gray's really making the breakthrough he needs. Brooker may be looking more ra ragged, but I'm not sure if he's wilting. lead uppercut from Gray, Brooker responded with a left hand of his own. That was good, just took the hit and struck back himself straight away. Oh, that was nice, lead uppercut, followed by the hook from Brooker. High-catching work surely has come from the man in blue in this final round, but Nathan Gray won't go quietly. Real urgency from Gray, isn't there? Well, I suppose there has to be now. It's all on the line. Well, both men raise their hands and touch gloves in mutual appreciation. Thank <laughs> you. 